Hello YouTube, this is Bill Griggs, uh, I'm from the Bill Griggs channel, and I'm doing my first live streaming um, video today um, for my podcast, the CNC Router Tips podcast. One of the uh, members of my uh, Facebook group was asking today how he would make bowls uh, using vCarve Pro from Vectric. It's, Vec it's uh, CNC software that allows you to carve things, and he wanted to make some really nice bowls and he sent a uh, picture in of the types of bowls that he would like to make and these bowls are very um, very easy to make it's not really difficult once you have your uh, your wood um, glued up and ready to go but uh, you know how do you program them well I'm going to show you step by step how um, that is done and um, We're going to be using Vectric VCarve uh, Pro software to do this. This is an older version, so you know it can be done with the old versions, the new versions. Um, it could even actually be done with Cut 2D, which is the entry-level program from Vectric software. So um, let's show you uh, what that uh, all looks like um, software-wise. So in this particular um, case, we're going to start from scratch with a new job and we're going to do the job setup. The piece of wood we're going to use is 12 inches by 12 inches and it's two inches thick. So whatever numbers you enter in these fields will change the size of this board. So if I put in six by 12, it changes it and gives you a preview of what the piece would look like. But uh, for this case, we're going to go 12 by 12 and we're going to go with two inches thick and we just hit OK and it gives us our work area. Now the center of the board, therefore, would be at six inches by six, uh, six inches in the X and six inches in the Y, and you can simulate that by dragging over one of these ruler bars until you get to the um, six inch mark, and that will give you a visual representation. You can drag one down from the top, and you know that will tell you where the center of the board is. Um, we don't really need those for this exercise, but I wanted to show you, you know, that that was available. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a circle. We're going to do a round tray first. Um, so I click the draw circle icon and we can set where the center of that circle is going to be. In this case, it's already set for us at the middle of this board at six inches in the X and six inches in the Y. We're going to start off with a large circle. Um, since this board is 12 inches long, we're going to make uh, our uh, tray 11 inches long. So we just type in the diameter and hit create. And it gives us our first line. And we probably want to uh, create a rim for that bowl. So let's put in a circle that's 10 inches wide and keep the same center point. That gives us the uh, inside and the outside um, of this tray. Okay. And um, the next step we want to take is give a place to put the uh, the dip, you know, a cup of the of dip in the center of this bowl. So that should probably be about four inches in diameter and in an appropriate rim. So let's make that three inches in diameter for the inside. Okay. That gives us the basic start of this uh, bowl that we're going to make. And we can go ahead and close out the circle um, tool. Now we're going to want to divide this bowl up into segments, or you could just cut it this, you know, this way with a one big um, circle around the outside and uh, you know a little center portion in in the middle. But let's make it a little more interesting. So we we'll choose the polyline tool, and we move our tool until you see the cursor change, and it will you know change into a uh, a bullseye that indicates that you're in the center of the circle when you move off of it it's just a polyline so you you click once left click once and then just drag your line straight on up um, till you get to the uh, intersection with this circle or you can go a little past if you don't mind doing some trimming uh, we're going to go past just to show you what that is and we click again and then we hit the escape key and that ends that line 
So now we've got a line from the center of the, of the bowl up um, to the 12 o'clock position. And we're going to use this line to create um, the uh, segments that divide this bowl up. So we're going to use the offset tool, which is over here under the edit tools. And you click on the offset tools button. And we're going to offset this outward a quarter of an inch uh, to the right. And I'm going to hit offset. And it put a line a quarter inch to the right of the one we had. And we're going to do the same thing to the left by clicking this radio button and hit offset. There we go. So we've got the two lines. We can close that offset tool out and we can hit the delete key to get rid of that center line. Okay, so now we've basically got um, this two line border and we can um, manually enter coordinates and create new ones or we can use the uh, array copy tool, circular array, and let it do all the heavy lifting for us. So we're gonna select those two lines, we open the circular array, we choose circular array. If you had chosen rectangular array, it would you know do grids, um, square grids, but the circular array will do it around the perimeter of the circle. And we set the rotation point, in this case it's six by six or the midpoint of this whole board. And then we take and we have rotate copies checked and we select how many segments of the bowl we want. If we want it to divide it into two, we would just hit two and then hit copy and it would divide that. Um, or we can hit control Z to get rid of those. Maybe go to three segments and hit copy. And you know, there's a peace sign shaped bowl um, or we can hit control Z to get rid of that. And we can try four segments and four segments is what we want. Um, and now it's divided up into four segments um, and it will, will work up to any number of segments you put in. I'm just gonna put in eight segments just so you can see. All right. Um, and let's back it back down to four. Now you've got your segments uh, and we're ready um, to, to go forward with this. So we can close this out. And now we're gonna clean up all these lines here. And we're going to do that using the trim tool. Um, and that's just simply a pair of scissors. When it's closed, you can't do anything. But when it there's a line that you can trim, it opens up and lets you know. So we're going to just clean up the top um, border. All the way around the circle. And this checkbox here, uh, if it's unchecked, if I'm doing a trim, it won't reconnect these lines together. But if I have it checked, it will, and it will weld the lines back together. So when I click this part here, uh, if I click around here, you can see that this is one big continuous shape um, when it's uh, set. And I'm gonna hit Control Z to go back and, and undo that and um, put it back. Now I'm going to go back to the tool. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to trim that vector and close it out. And now I'm going to select it again and we'll see that it's different. It didn't grab these two lines here. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have uh, rejoin trim vectors on. And we'll go ahead and clean up these So I don't want that one. Get rid of these right here. Okay, and it joins the insides to the outsides. And rather than click each of these, I can select them all one, two, three, four, and delete them all at once by hitting the delete key, or I can drag from right to left, that'll grab anything that we touched, or from left to right, and that'll grab 
just the pieces that were enclosed in it. So that deletes them. Um, now to double check our work, you can click each of these segments and they should be joined all the way with the dotted line. And uh, we did it right. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do, now we're ready to carve out the bowl and set up the tool pass for that. We're gonna need a uh, special tool and these indentations that are in the bowl, um, like in the picture you saw um, earlier, um, and I'll just show you that picture again one more time so you, you get to see what that looks like again. These indentations in the bowl are what are known as pockets toolpaths. So that's the type of toolpath that we're going to do. We're going to use two types of toolpaths um, in this um, in this particular episode uh, or in this particular project. Uh, we're going to use a profile toolpath and a pocket toolpath. So coming back to our drawing, what we do is we will select these segments, these five areas that we want the bit to carve away, and we come over to the second icon, create pocket tool paths, okay? And we're gonna make those pockets um, an inch deep um, because this bowl is two inches deep and it'll still give us a nice thick uh, bottom, or we could make it an inch and a, a half you know, if we wanted a, a thinner bottom, that's up to you. In this case, we're just gonna make it an inch. Then we're gonna select the bit. Now in this case, I have the tool already uh, made here, but if you don't have the tool, you can make your own. Um, and maybe we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, but to keep this quick, we'll, we'll just select this tool it's the one and a half inch uh, diameter bowl bit from Magnate. And I will put a link in the description to tell you where you can get this bit. Okay, and we just hit okay. Now, when we hit calculate, it calculates the tool pass for those areas that it's, that it's gonna remove. And you can control how many um, passes it makes uh, in the previous window, but for now, this is what we're going to do. And I'm going to uh, preview the tool pass. And this may take a while um, and may go slow because the uh, uh, video is streaming. So while it's um, calculating uh, the tool pass, um, you'll see uh, a blue bar running across the uh, the uh, bottom of the screen. And when that hits 100%, it will display the tool paths. And you'll get an idea of, you know, what this bowl will look like. You may be wondering how we got those rounded corners and, and why. And um, if you look back at this drawing, you notice that the, the corners are sharp and we could have spent some time putting radiuses in each of those corners to make, or fillets in each of those corners to make them rounded. But that would be really a waste of your time because this round bit that's on one and a quarter inches wide can only go so far into these corners. So we're using that to our advantage to simplify our drawing. Now I'm gonna show you where that bit will go. By clicking the solid button, it gives you a preview of just how far in your bit can travel. And, you know, this is useful to let you know that you're, what you're uh, carving is what you expect. So you can see we got very nice radiuses from that. So, you know, that's something to, to consider and to use to your advantage sometimes. Now, the last tool path that we need is this outer perimeter of the of the uh, bowl and we're going to do that with a profile tool path and we can select the create profile tool path select the a quarter inch bit 
to use. And this time we're going to go, um, we're going to go two inches deep into this cut. We're going to start at the top of the board and go down and we're cutting on the outside of the part. So the bit will be on this side of this line. Um, if you had chosen inside, you get a smaller um, bowl than you thought. And if it was on the line, um, smaller uh, as well. So what you want is the outside profile. And we'll go ahead and calculate that. And we have the solids turned on so you can see that it would have you know, cut on the outside. We can go back and look at that toolpath again um, and select inside and it'll give you a preview and it'll show you that it's cutting on the inside, which would make for a very thin wall on this bowl. So, you know, that just demonstrates what that feature does for you and, and why you would want to use the outside. In this case, we want the outside. So we calculate it again, and there it is. Now let's preview that toolpath. And as you can see, it cut through the board all the way through from one side to the other. And you could use tabs if you wanted to, to hold the board in place so that it doesn't move and uh, maybe, uh, uh, cause you problems but you know that's another topic for another video so there you have it that's how you can create bowls fairly easily fairly quickly in vcarve pro um, or in cut 2d uh, using a, a bowl carving bit um, So I hope this helps you. If you found this, this video, video helpful, helpful. Um, please consider uh, subscribing to the CNC Router Tips channel uh, for more videos like this. Let us know if this is something that you would like um, to see more of. Uh, if you have a specific project uh, that you would, uh, would like to see us do, we'd be glad to do it. Um, thank you again. I'm Bill Griggs for CNC Router Tips podcast and uh, for uh, uh, this you can check out uh, our episodes at cncroutertips.com. Thanks very much.